Tyson Fury's third and final fight against Deontay Wilder was nothing short of spectacular, capping off one of the greatest trilogies in heavyweight history. The first time I broke down Fury's style, I focused on how he stifled an opponent's offense by constantly interrupting their rhythm, fainting every time they tried to enter into an exchange. I only briefly touched on how Fury used wrestling tactics to dirty box when he was ready to end a fight. But since he put on a total masterclass on these tactics in his last fight against Wilder, I think it's time we delve a little deeper. If you go back and re-watch Fury's fight against Wilder, you'll notice all of these techniques at play. So let's get to it, spending most of the time on tactics that led to knockdowns. Fury has a few staple combinations that he uses to close the distance and set up power punches, like the jab cross and lead hook cross. By varying setting up his right with a jab or lead hook, Fury gives his opponent a simple but dangerous problem to solve in real time. Adding on a double jab brings one more layer of complexity. And mixing that up by turning the second jab into a lead hook adds yet one more layer. And many times, these combinations are enough to end the fight by themselves, as was almost the case when Fury landed his first knockdown against Wilder with a hook-cross combination. Fury's hook can even work to pin an opponent's guard or clear away their rear hand. This is actually similar to Wilder's favorite tactic of clearing an opponent's lead hand to make way for his right. Theoretically, coming in so aggressive should leave Fury wide open to counters. But luckily for Fury, he possesses otherworldly head movement. Combined with his ability to effortlessly work his punches over and under opponent's arms, Fury's head movement allows him to regularly enter into the clinch in advantageous positions. Once Fury has established the clinch, he can pummel his arms to transition between different positions, depending on what he's trying to set up. Unlike many fighters who use these techniques primarily to halt the action, Fury uses them to drain away an opponent's energy as he sets up hard, fight-ending shots. At times, he'll even lean his substantial weight on them, shutting down their head movement and throwing body shots to punish them for trying to use it in the first place. Like the legendary Henry Armstrong, Fury will use his head and shoulders to push opponents into new positions. Fury then uses the sudden moment of imbalance this creates for the opponent to suddenly disengage and throw. Uppercuts are a natural choice for this tactic, since they can sneak through even when just the smallest amount of space has been created. Fury will also reposition his head from shoulder to shoulder. This allows him to turn his competitor in either direction and create space to land shots from either side. It requires a fine balance to pull this off without getting called for a headbutt. Fury can also switch back and forth between mid-range and wrestling at a moment's notice. By moving on and off of the opponent's shoulders, Fury keeps them constantly guessing. He can move in to wrestle, staying safe and unbalancing his opponents, or move to mid-range to reposition or land harder shots. Because Fury seems to be completely fine executing head movement while pressed up against his opponent, he's able to take angles that would normally be closed off. For instance, he'll duck underneath an opponent's arm to basically teleport behind them. By moving off angle while staying so close, Fury can stay in range to catch his opponents as they attempt to realign themselves. This was how Fury landed his second knockdown against Wilder, weaving underneath Wilder's left hook from his right shoulder, then returning a hard right. You can check out my book Aggressive Defense if you'd like to learn these techniques for yourself. Along with his blended wrestling and head movement tactics favored by fighters like Henry Armstrong and Julio Cesar Chavez, Fury also has a preference for the kind of clinch work favored by fighters like Jack Johnson and Roberto Duran. Basically, this means that Fury will control a competitor's arms and head to set up shots. 
Here Fury utilizes an overhook to control an opponent's arm and set up a body shot. Next, he acts as if he's about to try and pummel his arm over, but instead uses that as a feint to set up a body shot off the same arm. Fury then blocks a return left, then establishes bicep control to set up a body hook head hook combination, before once again finding safety on the inside. Fury has just as many setups involving head control. He can frame to force opponents upright, or simply deny them an exit so they can't escape his attack. He'll even turn a cross frame into a brief headlock to put opponents into a bad position where they can't move away, and then follow up from there. Or he can simply use collar ties to achieve the same thing. Once again, this is just on the edge of legality, and depends a lot on the preferences of the ref. But Fury can help make it technically legal by releasing the hold on his opponent just before he throws his punch. These tactics were Wilder's ultimate downfall, leading to the final knockdown. Fury's grappling set up a hard uppercut that stunned him, giving Fury just enough time to land the final blows. It's rare enough to see such a well-rounded fighter, let alone a well-rounded fighter who's not only proficient, but a total master in nearly all areas of boxing. So now the question is, how do you think that Fury would do against Usyk or AJ? I look forward to reading your thoughts in the comments. From the Modern Martial Artist, this has been David Christian, wishing you happy training.